Hi everyone, it's Michael. Uh, I have another great geometry problem for you guys again. Um, this one is probably a little bit easier than the last one I posted, although it's often hard to measure um, the exact difficulty of a problem. But um, it's just, it looks fairly simple. It's just a couple of uh, segments and a circle but it's delightfully tricky. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, so if you want, please pause the video and see if you can figure it out. All right, so um, hope you all had fun with this. So now I'll start uh, with the solution. So we have a point A and we have a circle with center O and we draw the two tangents to that circle, uh, B and C. And then we let AO intersect the circle at D. So where D is the point farther away um, from A. So that wasn't written exactly in the problem statement, or it wasn't super clear, but uh, for the purpose of this problem, that's what I'm assuming. So then we draw uh, segment CD and we let X be the perpendicular from B to CD. And then we let Y be the midpoint of XB. And Z is where DY intersects the circle again. So we wanna show that AZC is 90 degrees. So how do we begin here? Well, so the first thing that I did was I let BC intersect AD at a point E. So I, I just drew an AZ and ZC there also, just because we want to show that AZC is 90 degrees. So I figured it would be good to uh, draw those two segments in. But by constructing point E, we actually get a number of different valuable things. Um, so first of all, um, E by symmetry has to be the midpoint of BC because it lies on the angle bisector BAC and AB and AC are tangents to the circle. So we know that BE is equal to EC. And from the problem statement, by is equal to yx. So um, using this, we know that ye has to be parallel to, to xc or, or cx. So that gives us one uh, valuable piece of information. Um, we also know that angle AEC has to be 90 degrees by symmetry um, because AO is perpendicular to BC. Um, so, but, but before, so I think that might be one of um, later in my playback of uh, all the different um, steps throughout this problem. Right, where I say that A is perpendicular to EC. But um, we know that from the problem statement, another right angle, we know that BX is perpendicular to XC. So since YE is parallel to CX, we have angle BYE is 90 degrees. Uh, so we're getting a number of uh, pretty valuable things from constructing that point E. Um, so we have BYE is 90 degrees. Um, there's another benefit of uh, constructing point E. So we know that BC, BZCD is a cyclic quadrilateral. And it turns out that, so YE lies on a line parallel to CD. Whenever you have a line parallel to CD, uh, cutting the chords at two points, so cutting BC and ZD at two points, in this case Y and E, it, it also happens 
that it has to be true that BZEY is cyclic. Um, this is kind of called Rhine's theorem. Some people call it Rhine's theorem. It's a fairly simple angle chase, but it's something um, that I always recognize whenever I look at um, a cyclic quadrilateral and I have a, a parallel line to one of the sides uh, cutting the two chords. Um, so BZEY has to be cyclic. Now, how do we get to that? So like I mentioned, it's kind of called Rhine's theorem. So some people just know, know that. But the proof is an angle chase that is not uh, super hard. So I will show it here. So first of all, we, so, uh, we want to show that BZEY is cyclic. And so one way to do that is we want to show that angle BZY is equal to angle BEY. But angle BZY is angle BZD, but that's angle BCD since those two angles intercept the same arc. But then since YE is parallel to CD, we have BCD is equal to BEY. So um, by the transitive property, we have BZY is BEY, and so BZEY is a cyclic quadrilateral. Um, now, since BZEY is cyclic, we knew that angle BYE is 90 degrees, so angle BZE has to be 180 minus that, since in a cyclic quadrilateral, um, the opposite angles always add up to 180 degrees. Um, so BZE is also a right angle. So I'm going to draw in those two segments. Um, and why not just also draw an EY? And BZE is a right angle. So where do we go from here? Well, so ultimately we want to show that angle AZC is 90 degrees. And here's yet another benefit of constructing point E, is that um, if we want to show that AZC is 90 degrees, that's kind of the same thing as showing that AZEC is a cyclic quadrilateral, because um, if AZC were 90, well, we know that AEC is 90 degrees, so um, that would mean that showing AZEC is cyclic would get us to where we want. Um, so how do we go about showing that AZEC is a cyclic quadrilateral? And uh, the easiest way, I feel like, is to show that angle ACZ is equal to angle AEZ. Um, that would get us there. Okay. So how do we show that angle ACZ is equal to angle AEZ? Well, we have enough information now uh, that an angle chase will um, solve the problem. So we have angle ACZ has to equal angle CBZ, and that's because AC is tangent to the circle. And whenever you have the angle between a tangent and uh, one of the chords, it has to equal any of the other angles intercepting that side. So ACZ is equal to CBZ, okay? But CBZ is EBZ, but we know that this is a right triangle right here. So angle EBZ has to be 90 minus ZEB, and 90 minus ZEB is ZEA, because AEB is a right angle. So if you look at this equation right here, angle ACZ has to equal angle ZEA, and so that means that AZEC is a cyclic quadrilateral. And now we're basically there. Um, because if AZEC is cyclic, and as I mentioned before, AZC has to equal angle AEC, which is 90 degrees. And that solves the problem. Uh, I hope you all liked this um, and had fun with it. So uh, if, you, if you really liked it, please um, uh, give it a like and 
uh, subscribe to my channel. And I hope you all um, found some other great solutions um, and continue to watch my other videos. Um, thank you very much.